All right, we'll go ahead and get going. A, remi Hold on. a reminder to that there are no recordings during the press conference. Uh, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices, <laughs> myself included, and make sure to give your name and affiliation when you get the mic to ask a question. Uh, we're joined by Texas head coach Mike White and the players Tegan Caban, Alyssa Washington, and Jelly Mitchell. We'll go for, to an opening statement from Coach White. Questions to just the players. The players will leave, and then questions just for Coach White. So if you have an opening statement. Sure. Yeah. Uh, obviously, that was an old-fashioned bowl game right there. One nothing uh, uh, pitchers duel. Uh, two tremendous pitches going at it. Uh, we have a blink first was going to win that game. Kind of, I think everybody knew it in the stadium. Uh, fortunately, we were able to create some pressure there in that last thing, and they but hang on. But uh, tremendous job by Tegan Kavan, you know, pitching uh, for a second time against that same club. That's a World Series contender, showing no no nerves. So I now call her Ice Kavan. <laughs> so uh, you know, congratulations to, to Stanford too on a great year. Uh, they battled through some adversity. I mean, I think that was their third or fourth time facing. Um, Elimination, uh, we know that what that's like from back in 2022. I think we faced six times. And uh, you know, they had nothing to lose. They were giving it everything they had. And Nigel Kennedy, uh, wow, well, what can you say? She's really, really tough. So we're just uh, fortunate to be going on to our second uh, World Series final in uh, three years. Questions for Texas players? Okay. Uh, Tegan, you threw that one Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Get the mic real quick. <laughs> All right, front row. Tegan, you, you threw that one hitter Thursday. How did this one feel different considering it was scoreless going into the seventh? I honestly was more calm today. I was more in control of my breathing. I felt more in control of the game, and I had no doubt that we'd pull through. But I was just more calm today and was ready to get after it. All right, we'll go second row right next. Jacob Richmond, Lone Star Live. Alyssa, could you just walk us through the rundown? What were you thinking uh, uh, in the play that you made? Yeah, I mean, at first my initial reaction was go, but then I saw like quick – the pitcher had got it, so I kind of froze up a little bit. But instead of just going back, I wanted to kind of bait her and get into that rundown. And just what was going through my head was just whatever it takes to score. Because I knew in a ball game like that, it just takes like one run to kind of get ahead in that game. So it was just going through my mind was whatever it takes. All right, we got front row left now. Um, Brady Aaron and Softball America, just for the three of you, I just, you know, guys haven't allowed a run like this in these three games, just been really competitive and just – how much did that super regional and getting tested kind of improve what you're doing right now in Oklahoma City? Julie, you want to start then come down the line? Um, I think that we just really tapped in and focusing on ourselves. You know, the super regional was a really tough weekend and it took everything that we had. We had to get together and do our job. I think that, you know, we did a great job as a team, you know, putting our heads together, putting all of our effort, and we left it all out there. Um, I think coming into this week, you know, we knew it's going to be the toughest week of the season, so we kind of had to have the same mentality. Um, sticking together, doing our job, pitch by pitch. Yeah, um, I would agree definitely with Jolie. Um, definitely sticking together, um, leaning on one, one another. It's not going to just be one person. It's going to take all of us to do the job, to win the big games, um, and in those big moments, just leaning on one another. Um, when they were doing the which side was louder, the first base or third base, I actually thought out there that I think Austin was louder. So I think that just shows like how well that prepared for us for this moment and how intense it could be out there. All right, we'll go front row right. Jaina Bardall with The Athletic. Tegan, I wanted to ask you, your coach said it best, I think it was a pitcher's duel out mm -hmm. there, you and, you and Nija, just throughout the game. Can you just describe the intensity and, and how it impacted, I guess, I guess, your game? I think I knew going into it that I needed to, needed to keep them off the board. That's what needed to happen the last time I threw against them. So just keep my offense in it. Reese told me every time we every time we went out there, just keep us in it, keep us in it, and we'll we'll come through. And so that was just the mindset going out there through each pitch. Front row left now. Uh, Alyssa Kirk Bowles from the Austin American. Uh, so it was a squeeze play, safety squeeze play, or it wasn't a suicide squeeze. No, it, but, it was a drag one. <laughs> and you wanted to try to get in the run, Dan. You weren't trying to get back to third. Yeah, no, no sir. Um, so, like like I said in that moment, um, she did put it down, and it kind of went straight to her, and I recognized that, and I just – I stopped in that moment. Um, and then I realized, like, when the catcher was coming at me that I wanted to bait her a little bit and get in that run down. Um, yeah, so. And how did you get under the tag? Uh, <laughs> wait, are you asking me? Oh, okay. Um, just recognizing where the catcher was standing and, like, the third baseman, how she had it. She had, um, when she was chasing me down, instead of, like, the ball in her hand, she had it in her glove. So recognizing that that's going to take a little time with that transfer to get it in there. So just sliding my hand in there, like, recognizing where the catcher stands and the timing of that transfer. All right, we'll stay front row left. 
Uh, Jolie, when you go against a, a pitch like Nigel, what can you learn like after, you know, six, seven, eight at bats? Because you made that good contact in the seventh. Um, I was just focused on keeping the ball down. We talked about that all day, and especially, you know, we emphasized that we did well uh, first game this week. So, you know, I mean, I kind of shortened up and just, just looking for good contact, um, trying to stay away from pitches that were up, pitches that were in, and just trying to make contact, get it through the hole. More questions? Okay, we got second or right. Deegan, can you just talk a little about the defense, particularly outfield today, and uh, how much confidence gives you when you've got players making those big plays anytime there's hard contact? Uh, they all made big catches for me today, every single one of them, and Bella had a handful, and Caden had a big one, so I couldn't do it without them. This would, might be a different ball game if they don't make those catches, so I'm just grateful they're out there for me. All right, front row left. Yeah, uh, Tegan, could you describe the, the loud foul ball to right field and then the, the clock violation that got you an inning ending strikeout? Yeah, I think that's, I mean, a momentum shift for us, and I think that's what kind of propelled us. We used that, and we knew that we could use that to push us and get some runs across the board. So, obviously, it worked out in our favor. And, and did you feel a whole lot more pressure? You, had a, you won four to nothing in the first mm -hmm. game, but this one, obviously, right down the wire. Did the pressure build up in you, or were you totally relaxed the whole game? Maybe a little, but honestly, I felt pretty good. I felt a lot better my second time out here on this stage. So, I don't know, I was just calm and was focusing my breath, and I knew that we'd pull through. I knew my defense had my back. Any more questions for players? All right. Thank you, players. Thank you. Questions for Coach White? Okay. Start right here. Front row left. Coach, Coach, kind of uh, the development of Tegan, you know, she goes against, by all accounts, the best pitcher in, in the game twice this week. You know, and she, she, she comes out on top. How would you describe her development over the course of the season? And where is she at kind of in the hierarchy of college softball pitching right now? Well, that's, a, that's a really tough question. Um, you know, still early in her career. Um, she's still working uh, and getting better and developing other pitches as well. I think right now, though, just her ability to stay very calm in those situations uh, is, is great. I mean, early on, uh, and especially going even back to regionals and super regional, her first super regionals, she was nervous. You know, you could visibly see it, um, but you couldn't see those nerves uh, this week. So I think that, um, you know, Dean Wallum, our, our sports psychologist, has done a great job with us. And of course, the coaching staff as well, Coach Patty Ruth Taylor, done a tremendous, jo tremendous job with our pitching staff and just working with them day in and day out um, as well. And just like they said, they've got confidence in each other right now. And I think that also helps. All right, we'll go second or right. Coach, can you talk about what was going through your head during that rundown at the end and uh, also uh, how you've seen Alyssa grow from two years ago when last time you were in the Women's College World Series to now where, where she is as a leader and as a player? Yeah, well, obviously she's become a leader for us, but being a captain on the team, I just like the way she's stepping up in some of our team talks and tough moments, things that you don't see on the field uh, that really make a difference. She's kind of a galvanizing person for us. Um, you know, on that on that safety squeeze, uh, you know, it was her read. We knew the third baseman was in quite a way, so we could get a pretty good jump. Um, she decided to maybe get in that rundown at that point. But we felt like with that part of the order up that we should be able to score if it didn't work out. We'd get in a rundown and won't lose a whole lot. But as it turned out, Nigel just stepped up the gas and got the next three out. So uh, sometimes you just never know when you're facing a good pitch like that. But, you know, we were able to force the issue and, and create a run with a great slide. All right, we we'll go front row left now. Yeah, Mike, you, your team's hit a ton of home runs this year, but did the philosophy change to uh, we just got to make something happen here because you had the stolen base and then, you know, like you said, the squeeze button? Yes, sir. I mean, it, it is what it is. When you're facing a great pitcher like that, you're not going to score a lot of runs. Uh, she showed last week uh, just how good she is when she got – Gave up six runs, I think, and I could be wrong on the number, but she gave up six runs against LSU, came out and sh threw two donuts right, right against them. And that, to me, is a mark of an excellent pitcher with a lot of guts. And um, we knew we were going to be in for a fight, even though we'd won the first game 4 nothing. It didn't mean anything to her. She was going to come right at us, and she did. And your defense has been erratic at times. It's maybe not the number one strength of your club, but how would you rate a lot of these plays yeah. that your team's made? Well, I would say uh, our defense gets – Pretty, pretty bad knock, mainly because we get to a lot of balls. We make plays on balls, and we, are not, we don't care about the errors. We care about making the plays and making the outs. 
And I think that's a difference. There's some teams, and I'm not knocking anybody here, but there's some teams where maybe they, they, don't, they don't get the errors because they don't get to the balls. Um, but our kids are selling out. They're learning what it is. And it's great seeing this game elevate. You're seeing so many great plays. I mean, you look on Sports Center and you see all these great outfield plays that are going on right now, infield plays, people throwing from all angles. This this dynamic right now. You gotta you gotta stay up with it. It's pretty cool. All right, we go front row right. Coach, wanted to ask you about catchers and the level of play we've seen on at that position this series. Yeah. Tegan talked about Reese talking her through. I know Reese is a huge heartbeat of your team. So, but just in general, all these teams here, how do you evaluate the level of play at that position? Yeah, there certainly are a lot of really good ones out there. I mean, uh, Jocelyn Erickson, you know, is one of those, she's probably one of the hottest hitters in the in the, in the tournament. You know, she can really rake. Um, uh, she's tough. I mean, and then of course Reese, and we got another one on our club, Katie Stewart, and of course, uh, you know, Kenzie Hansen is just. Has she graduated yet? <laughs> My gosh, I mean, <laughs> she's tremendous, and, and and the list goes on. And I don't want to keep naming them because I will forget them. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's a position where I've been fortunate in my career to have some excellent, excellent catches, and it makes a huge difference. And not just the receiving, but they've got your back. And I think that's what Reese is learning to do right now is to calm Tegan down and say, I've got your back. You throw it, I'll stop it. Right. Please make sure to silence your cell phones, by the way. That was Somebody. me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of blowing up on me. <laughs> Guy. It's, it's probably guy. Del Conte. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll go to the second row left today. <laughs> Hi, Coach. Uh, Dave Wilson from ESPN.com. Um, yeah, I know you've talked about this a little bit this week, or you've been asked about it, but obviously it's the last Pac-12 team in the tournament. You spent some very formative years of your career out there. What um, sort of what is your takeaway from that? It's sad to see the Pac-12 go. Obviously, what they've meant to softball history. Um, from your experience, you know, seeing the last team exit the Women's College World Series, what, is that, what does that mean to you? Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's very sad. You know, we all don't know how it's going to turn out in the future, what's going to happen, how it's going to play out because of, you know, it, was, it was made, it was, a, it was a money move, you know, and just for TV and everything. But um, I'm just sad to see that conference fold. I wish they could have stayed together because that's the conference I started out in. The great rivalries, great coaches, uh, even the umpires. You know, they're all looking for jobs now from the Pac-12. And, um, you know, so there's a, there's a lot of uh, carryover through that. But um, I'm, I'm sure things will level out. we just got to work through it and see what happens and, uh, you know, do the best we can with it. There's going to be a lot more travel for some of these kids, and we got to figure out whether this is good for their, for their health or not good for their mental health and, you know, just work through it. All right, our last question will be from Eric Lopez on Zoom. Oh, there you go. Eric Lopez, D1 softball. Uh, coach, how would you, you've been now to the champ series as a number one seed and as an unseeded team. How would you compare the two dra drastic styles of getting to the champ series? And is there anything from the 2022 champ series you, you want to you wanna kind of keep in the back of your mind for this year's champ series? Wow, that's a tough one. You know, right now I've got to think about that, but we just relishing in the opportunity to get back and play in a, in a, in a series, you know, for the, for the championship. Um, you know, it's, it's tough. We're, it's an honor to be, you know, sitting here right now as a number one team. Um, I think, you know, there could be several teams that could have that title. Uh, and obviously one of them is Oklahoma. They're an excellent team. But whoever comes through Oklahoma or Florida, we've got to be ready to go. And um, I think the last time we kind of got off to a pretty rough start, obviously. And, uh, it, but we, our team never, never stopped fighting. And so we're using some of that adversity that was happened a few years ago from our older players on the team to be able to spread that to the younger team. And we'll certainly use that in the next day or two to kind of talk to them about that and what we need to do. But right now, you know, we've faced a lot of adversity already this year. We've faced one of the toughest schedules in the country. We've, um, we've you know, faced that super regional against our arch rival. Um, that was just one of the toughest series I've ever coached in. And we came through on the right side of it after being down numerous times. Um, so I just don't know. I, want to, I don't want to put a, a, a lid on this team and this program and what the capabilities are and what they can do. All right. That'll wrap it up for Texas. Thank you. Thank you.